So after I saved mine, I started thinking about it, and I'm like, that little thing right there bothers me. If you have something like that, I'm going to show you how you can fix it. I mean, there are several ways, but I'm going to show you an easy way. Uh, if you have a minor error along the edge, because it's a, a layer mask, we can edit it. So click the layer mask thumbnail. So I'm going to, you click right here on that thumbnail. And then use the brush tool. So I'm going to click on the brush tool. And I'm going to do black. Uh, white is where you want the color applied. And so if you were wanting something visible down here, like if your curve went down here, you would paint white. If you want to get rid of like this right here, I'm going to have it black. All right. So then I've got my little brush, and I'm just going to simply drag it right across there. Look at there. Doesn't that look much better? So remember, if it were something in here, you would use white. If it's something on the outside, you would use black. All right. So we've used the pen tool to quickly and precisely draw a path that traces the outline of an object in an image, which was the orange that now looks like a lemon. And you converted the path into a selection and used that selection to create a layer mask that isolates the subject when applying an adjustment layer. What would happen if you click when you see a small circle by the pen tool pointer? Remember when we were drawing the path around this and we got over here to A and it turned to that little circle? When you click that, it closed the path. We're now going to create a logo that will overlay the image using text and a shape layer. If your rulers aren't visible, mine are, but if yours aren't, if you'll click view and then rulers. And if yours is not on inches, if you'll right click on the ruler and select inches. Because we're creating a postcard, so that would be an appropriate unit of measure for print. So in the layers panel, make sure the hue saturation adjustment level is selected so that the layer we're about to create will be above it. Select the horizontal type tool, horizontal type tool, and then do the following. Choose a bold or heavy typeface. I'm going to use Arial Bold. You can choose something different if you so desire. We want the text of the type point to be 55. And then we want it right aligned. There's left, middle, right. Because we're going to add a graphic element to the left of the text. Click the color swatch and select the text. We want our text to be white. Click OK. Drag the horizontal type tool to create a text layer across the bottom inset about half inch away from the sides and bottom so you can always move it later type citrus lane farms I know what's happening with mine. Yours, mine's on all caps. Yours shouldn't be right now. It's going to be in a little bit. Well, I thought I unchecked it. I was wrong. Oh, I know what's happening. Let's do this. Let's start over. Now. Citrus Lane Farms. Hit check to commit. Leave the text layer selected in the layers panel. The font looks better with tighter letter spacing. So with that text selected, we are going to go up here. Mine is already set. I don't know why. I didn't do this, but... Yours is probably on zero, which is more spread out. We're going to change it to minus 25. And then we're going to do all caps like thus. 
If needed, move the, use the move tool to reposition it so it looks better relative to the bottom and right sides. So you click on this and you can drag it to get it however you want it. We're going to put a graphic to the left of this later. What happens if you created one work path and then draw another work path? Well, what happens is the first path is replaced by the most recently drawn path. We are now going to add a preset shape. When you need a shape such as a symbol or an object, one place you can turn to is the shapes panel, which contains a wide selection of pre-made graphics. When you add a shape to a document, it becomes a shape layer. A shape is a vector object drawn using paths, which has two advantages. You can edit it using the same techniques you used to edit the paths you drew earlier in this lesson. Also, like a text layer, a path is, is resolution independent, so it will always be as smooth and detailed as the document resolution allows. You find shapes in the Shapes panel. It's easy to use because it works like other Photoshop panels that contain preset effects, such as the Swatches, Gradients, and Brushes panels. You'll see small visual previews of each preset. You can organize them in groups or folders and you can create your own. Photoshop includes more preset groups than you see by default in the presets panel list. So I'm going to show you how to get those. So click Window and then Shapes. I'm going to drag this up. Right now you probably don't see legacy shapes and more. What you would need to do, if you'll click these three little lines right here, and then click Legacy Shapes and More, that will add this. When you add Legacy Shapes and, um, I've done it twice now, let me delete this one. When you click this arrow beside it, you see that there is a boatload of stuff that's in there that was not in the original, or in your basic stuff. So. We're going to expand the flowers presets group and we're going to scroll down and we are going to select this bottom right corner one. We're going to drag the last shape preset and drag it and drop it to the left of the citrus lane farms logo. I clicked back on the background layer. I don't know if I was supposed to, but oops. Okay, my bad. Don't click on the background because it's locked. We can't, we can't do anything. So click on the text layer. Oop. All right, let's try this again. The text box can't be open like mine was. So there we go. The flower shape now appears in the layers panel. You see it over here. It also is in your path layer. It currently has a transform bounding box around it so that you can make adjustments before committing it to the document. And yes, there's some adjustments to be made. So drag anything to make this about uh, one and a half inches tall. Doesn't have to be exact whatever looks good to you. Drag it to position between the left edge of the document. Uh, I'll leave it right there. I'm just doing nothing but messing up. Click the commit transform button or press enter return. I pressed return already. So the bounding, bounding box disappears. The shape is added using the current fill and stroke settings for shapes, which were the ones set for the practice shape earlier. The flower shape is intended to have a solid yellow fill. That change cannot be done with the bounding box being active, but now that it's been committed to the document, change, the colors can be changed. Make sure the flower Shape is still selected in the Layers panel. Double click the name in the Shape layer. I 
type flower. Press enter or return. Select any shape tool such as the rectangle tool or anything grouped with it. Any of these. The options bar now displays setting for shapes up here. So we're going to make some changes. In the options bar, click the fill swatch. And we're going to go down to RGB. And we're going to click this yellow right here. In the options bar, click the stroke swatch. We're going to select no color. Close the pop-up menu by pressing enter or return. Choose select. Deselect layers. Now nothing is selected. If needed, use the move tool to reposition the flower and text. If you want to move them around, you can just click on them. Oh, you have to select that layer. I don't have anything selected. But you can remove it around and so on and so forth. You've combined an image, a color adjustment layer masked with the help of the path you draw by hand, a pre-made shape, and a text layer. The postcard is ready to go. So how can you edit a pre -shape, preset shape after placing it? You can use the pen tool. You can use the direct selection tool. You can use the direct <laughs> direction tool selection tool all these are correct yeah both it's got the same answer twice so let's click file and then save